Well, I'm Otessa Godar, and I am the founder of 2020 Productions, which is Perfect Vision Media in Washington, D.C. We specialize in full-service digital productions and online art. Um, we also have the D.C. Web and Digital Film Festival, which is now in its fourth year. I also created the longest continually running web series, which goes by the name Orange Juice and Bishop's Garden, which is about teenagers growing up in Washington, D.C. in the 90s. Um, and also, I wrote the, the first ever textbook for how to create a web series. It's called The Wild West of Film, and it's currently being used in universities. And I think that's all the news that's fit to print. So you've been involved in the web series. Now, is this a festival? The DC, web, yes, it is a full-fledged festival. Um, and a lot of the reasons for its genesis were when I first started out in online media and web series, it was, I guess, 2006, 2007, so it was really the early years. There were only a handful of um, shows and content like that. And a real well, bummer about it is that so many of the film festivals were, you know, they were geared towards traditional filmmaking, which meant that uh, any reputable film festival, they either wanted your screening there to be um, a domestic premiere or an international premiere. It couldn't have been anywhere else. And part of that, in terms of the fine print, meant that it could not be online. Now, if you're doing something that is online specific, then delaying the release of your web series and not putting it online so that you can go to a festival is in many ways counterintuitive because you want to put your web series online. Um, and out of that sort of frustration and that, you know, me complaining about that and saying, oh, why is this like this? Why aren't there this? Why isn't there this? Um, actually, I credit my dad from kind of looking at me and saying, well, you know, stop bitching. If it doesn't exist, maybe you should do it. And that was very good advice. So I was like, yeah, I should probably stop complaining. And if it doesn't exist and if there is a need, I'm sure that I'm not the only one who's feeling this. I'm sure that there are a lot of other filmmakers who are feeling this. So let's start it. Let's see how this hunch goes. Create something and see see what what happens. See if we can you know prove our hunch right. And fortunately, that's actually what ended up happening. It was really gratifying to have a, a way for all of the web series creators and all of the appreciators and the actors to come together and network and create a market for them. Something that really hadn't existed before. There was a you know, a festival in LA, but other than that, at the time, there was nothing else, nothing in the south of the US, nothing in the east, I mean, just nothing. Now, four years later, we're seeing web series festivals pop up all over the globe, which is awesome. But at the time, it was really kind of a wing and a prayer. It was like, I think that this is, this is, I think that there is a need that I've identified in the market, but I just hope that I am right, because we're about to test this out, and I hope it's not a failure. So, so how do one, um, apply or compete or get into the film festival? What is the um, criteria for that? Sure, so our festival, but one of the things that I also like about our festival is that we have started to also accept um, screenplays that are specific to online content, which I don't think there are, I can't think of any other festivals that have a screenwriting component to it. It's really just completed work. Um, we also have games like video games, interactive games, and app development are other areas that we focus on. But our submissions are open for several months, and anyone can submit. It's pretty easy, just on the website, on the dcwebfest.co. And I should stress that it is .co, not .com. It's not a typo. It's, it is .co. But yeah, the submission process is relatively simple, and we try to keep our um, submission fees a little bit lower than everyone else to make sure that, you know, because one of the things I really like about new media is I think that we see the democratization of media there. And so making it more accessible is really important. I like the fact that while Hollywood might just only be doing, um, you know, sequels and remakes and, you know, you're only going to get a certain kind of story that's very middle of the road, it's very whitewashed, whatever, then I mean, what about the stories for everyone else? You know, we would like to see our stories. I think there's something nice about being able to see yourself on the screen. And if you never get to see yourself on the screen, that's, that's sort of psychologically damaging. It's not, you know, so there are all of these stories that deserve to be told, that want to be seen. And I think that the web has become a real 
focal point for that. So I think that a lot of the content that we're seeing is just awesome. And so, yeah, just in an effort to to make it even more accessible, we do try to keep our, our submission fees lower than everyone else. Let's go travel to the Orange Juice Bishop Garden. Yes. The summer of 1997. Now, why did you feel the need to create such a piece? Sure. A series. So it's funny. It um, That is a project that ended up spanning seven years of my life. And then there are seven seasons. You were seven then, so you about 14 <laughs> now. You were very young. Yeah, no, <laughs> it started, um, let's see, the summer of 97 is the final chapter. But it goes back every every season is another year. So it starts in the early 90s and ends in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And ends up, you know, each season is not just a web series, but it's also a feature film. So it can work a lot of different ways. But at the time, I was looking to do my thesis for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And I was really struck at the time by what I saw as the future of how people were going to consume media. And a lot of that had to do with my um, youngest brother and sister. And I was noticing that they were consuming more media, but the way that they were doing it was changing. We always hear about the decline of the box office. So I was hearing that in film school and then watching my brother and sister and thinking, you know, I think that we're about to move to television over IP. I think that all of our viewing, much, much like our phone lines all went to IP, I was like, we're mm -hmm. gonna see the death of television. Death, you know, re rebirth, reimagining, what have you. Um, and I wanted my thesis to reflect that idea that I had, that interest that I had, and the business model that I had developed around it. So I developed the show, Orange Juice and Bishop's Garden, that's about a group of teenagers growing up in D.C. in the 90s, which I grew up in D.C. in the 90s. So it's sort of inspired by my memories and ur urban legends and just everything about that time period um, and sort of a nostalgia in the present. And I liked that it could be viewed, if you were a teenager, at the time of its release, you could appreciate it as a teenager and also kind of be like, wow, that's really weird, life before the internet, life before cell phones. You know, I like the idea of a web series about the cusp of the pre-internet age. I thought that was interesting. But then it also function in kind of a the wonder years way as for those of us who remember that time and this nostalgia for that time in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what that project was. And I really enjoyed making it. I would say that it's a project that as much as it was something that we all made, it was also something that I felt at the end had made me in many ways. So it was really you know, a pleasure and an important part of my journey. I so what was the process um, when uh, uh, creating your characters? You have some interesting characters there. Well, thank so, you. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the process of developing your characters for that particular piece? I, I don't know. I mean, I think I was just struck by, like I was saying about you never see yourself on the screen. I think that some of it was people inspired by people that I might have known, um, but then kind of all put into a blender and then shaken up and then, well, what if I did this instead of that? That might be more narratively interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but like really, I think more than anything, I, I was struck by wanting to represent the kinds of people that I remember being friends with and the kinds of people that I remembered identifying with or feeling like I was at that time, um, but that, you know, weren't really getting the airtime, weren't getting the screen time. I was like, this, you know, they deserve that screen time. These were interesting, compelling, sometimes dangerous people who, um, you know, deserve some representation. Now, were there any characters in orange juice, any of the storyline, the narrative is true. Anything based on somebody That's else's life. Funny, actually, because <laughs> I have a lot of friends, and they're all convinced that they're a character. Uh -huh, but then but I'll have multiple friends who are like, "Oh yeah, I'm Roxanne, right?" I'm like, "There cannot be three Roxannes. Why do you all think that you're Roxanne? Where is that coming from?" So I think that there's a tendency to see that the characters are definitely not my friends, but every once in a while. There is an event that will be in there that will be a, that will have happened, like the pita bread, the girl who cuts herself and then she thinks she finds her skin and that's mm -hmm. that happened. Oh. And my my friend was actually very nice because it was just such a ridiculous over the top experience. I was like, can I put this in here? Like that's just such a such a moment in time. And she's like, yeah, you can put that in there. That's okay. So what else can we look forward to in the future? 
and, and you know working with your web series that you have something you have another set of mm -hmm. another series I do tell I'm me currently about currently working on a young adult speculative fiction mm -hmm. I say speculative fiction because sometimes people get scared by science fiction um, but young adult speculative fiction it is both a book and a web series and they are done from there's a society that's sort of separated so the book is done from one perspective and then the show is done from the other and I'm working on that I'm really excited um, so that's what's next on the horizon but of course the festival is still the festival and the teaching and the textbook are also you know they, they take up some time too so you've been doing it for four years so I'm, I'm more than sure each year was modified or is there some change or growth to it so oh to the festival take, yeah so. oh yeah absolutely um, constant learning process and especially in the beginning we really didn't have anything to compare it to because we we're like well we know this thing we want this thing to happen but it doesn't really exist so what mm -hmm. the heck is that going to look like i guess let's try it out and see um so over time i think it's grown which is great sometimes you get you know sometimes you learn and you improve your hunch about what people are looking for so that's always positive is over time, knowing your audience better. Um, and this year, I'm just thrilled that the Carnegie Institution for Science is hosting us because it's such a beautiful, beautiful location. And I think it also acknowledges the fact that this is kind of the flashpoint of art and technology. So it's a great space. Um, I think it really elevates the, the community itself that sometimes feels like, in terms of online content, sometimes they feel like the, you know, the unloved stepchild of the film community and it's nice to have like a, such a show-stopping event space to show that this is really um, powerful artistically meaningful work this isn't a one-off you know this is a truly important uh, type of art that has arrived so for us that's really exciting and I think that the um, interest of the press over time increasing also helps to uh, spotlight all the great work that people are doing. But yeah, I would say we're always looking to grow. We're also always looking to learn um, both about what we're doing and also about our audience. Um, and I'm really delighted to know that we're always getting more submissions and also submissions from all over the world. Mm -hmm. The fact that we really are getting international submissions is great because I think, you know, if we're talking about feeling like the, the lesser sibling, if you will, mm -hmm. DC often, you know, feels like the the forgotten middle child or whatever of New York or LA. And it's great to know that no, DC is not a stepping stone to get to New York or LA. DC is a destination in its own right and people are coming from all over the world to DC to celebrate this work. Um, so that's really exciting. But yeah, we're always learning. We're always refining what we're doing. We're always trying to grow. So every year it definitely changes. Um, while I was on this site, I noticed that you have several different webs, a series. Now you have one, is it one called the Location Spotlight? And it's the Exorcist Steps. Is that part of oh, yeah. OJ web series? It's funny, that actually spun off from Orange Juice. Okay. Um, and we called that The Secret Project. It was inspired by a conversation that I had been having with a friend of mine who had just moved. I, I used to live in New York, um, and she had recently moved from New York. We were having... Uh, meeting up after work for like a couple of bites and she was saying how there's really nothing going on in DC and there's nothing like New York she wanted to get back to New York and I countered with the fact that I thought that there actually is a lot going on in DC but I think the real problem is that it's harder it's harder to find your tribe mm -hmm. it's harder to scratch the surface that everything is there but it's not as read readily available as a place like New York. Right. And that that was really, I urged her to think about the struggle that she was having in those terms and not just that DC doesn't have anything cool. Um, and that conversation continued to percolate in the back of my brain. And I was like, you know, it'd be really awesome if we just did almost like a really light travelogue show. Mm -hmm. We could focus on some of the cool places because you know, people are always like, where did you film? Where is that? Like, mm -hmm. where do I find that? You know, those would be comments we'd get in YouTube, just random things that would come our way. And I was like, you know, yeah, DC has all these awesome things, all of these awesome things that are happening. Let's do like a travelogue series that focuses on everything awesome that is happening in DC so that people are maybe a little bit more aware and that it's not quite so difficult to scratch the surface for, say, a newcomer who's coming being like, 
I don't, I don't know what to do. There's nothing here for me. I miss New York. So. Mm -hmm. So was that part of the Exorcist steps? Yeah, the Exorcist steps was one of the episodes <laughs> for that project. Okay. Exactly. Okay, yeah. good. Now, what about Benetting Goth? Benetting, okay, so we also, we um, will produce and then we'll also distribute and consult mm -hmm. um, and distribute other web series. Mm -hmm. So there are a wonderful selection of shows in our family that we do the um, distribution for. And Bennington Gothic is one of those shows. Okay. Yeah, and it's a really cool show. I really like the premise. And Carmen's actually a really. So cool I guess the audience is going to be like really excited to see these different works and, mm -hmm. and plus whatever you have done and and yeah. for the for this particular festival. So I'm more than sure. Oh, sorry. One of our goals always is um to really create a destination for non geo blocked content. Mm -hmm. And I think that. The inspiring factor for that was that bringing it back to orange juice, um, we really we started to really hit viral. And when we realized that we had viewership in over 145 countries mm -hmm. throughout the globe, we were like, "Wow, this is this is huge!" Mm -hmm. People, and then we started a big um, subtitling campaign, and you know, making sure that we're reaching out to the deaf community as well. So we had closed captioning, all of this. When we realized the kind of like impact that we were having, mm -hmm. um, and I think the non geo block is really important. If you know that the international community is so interested in this content, that you know, making sure that you're providing an outlet that's not geo blocked is really important. Like something like um, Hulu or Netflix, you go to a different country, you can't get all the same content. You know, mm -hmm. so much of it is kind of X out for you. So making sure that there is a place to support the indie work and also make sure that it is equally available everywhere is I think important. So we're always trying to, to build that library and build those connections. So okay. I have with me today, uh, Carmen Shamwell, who is the company president and festival director as well as Christina Hammond, who does our um, out outreach coordination as well as marketing. Hi, Pride on the Set Magazine. Thank you guys so much for showing up today and talking with Otessa about the DC Web Fest, her book, A Wild West of Film, Orange Juice and Bishop's Garden, and our company, 2020 Productions. We're so excited for the festival. It's coming up next weekend, Saturday, March 5th. It's going to be a really fun night. If you guys go to our website, pcwebfest.co, you'll see all the amazing official, official selections that we have. People have submitted these great web series from all over the country and all over the world. They make these fully, you know, complex shows that are done on little to no budget. And it's really great to see what they can do. So we want to bring them all here on one night so we can really honor them and show their stuff on the big screen. So we hope that you'll all attend.